Here's a BMW Z3 M Coupe that we've got in at Reedish Motorsport. It's come in for some corrosion work. Customers noticed some corrosion on the front lower seals near the jacking point area. Here's the jacking point. And behind the bolt-on metal side skirt, uh, part of the lower seal seems to be corroding and it's just started flaking away by the seam sealer in the paint. So this needs to be addressed and find out if it's structural corrosion or if it's just surface corrosion. Uh, hopefully it's surface and therefore we can then um, remove it, treat it, paint it, protect it. Uh, rest of the car on the side looking very good. It's just the very front edges, probably just stone chips. You see quite a lot of Z3 and, and they seem to have this sort of area suffering from. Just behind the front wheels, similar area on this one. I think this one's had some paint put on it on the outside but you can still see the area here where the seam sealer is missing, all that is corrosion. And then there's some damp patches here, which I think is some sort of seam sealer that's been put on. But luckily, being a Z3M, the metal side skirts uh, just come off with the self-tapping screws. So we're going to take them all off front to back and see what we do them with. We've now got the wheel arch liners off in the rear, reaching through to the various points which the side skirts are held on. Also got the front wheel arch liners off. So again, we can get into the corners where the, um, where the wheel arch liners connect. Just taking the seal skirt off, and you can see the dirt that collects behind them. So we'll give that a clean whilst the car's accessible, whilst we can get to that using a genuine BMW plastic wedge with the part number there. So these are for the trim items to make sure they come off without moving, making any scratches. And we'll get all that cleared up during part of the process. We've got the metal seal covers off the Z3 M Coupe now. So we can have a good look at this corrosion that we're going to be dealing with. I'll just stand back and give you a look. So front wings off as well. Now we can see the outer seal structure. And this is the corrosion that the customer is concerned about. So that's where the seal, seal joins in on. So you can't see any of that, but there is corrosion in that area there behind the seal. But it was mainly this corrosion here that was quite visible. Uh, even with the seal and the wheel arch liners fitted. If the wheel arch liners come down here and here and finish up on those two studs there and this is the corrosion or concern. Luckily the seals are extremely thick, probably two mil thick I'd say at least extremely thick these outer seals um, so, and when I talk about outer seals I'm talking about the structural seal here. So hopefully none of this is going to be structural and it's just corroded but there are some interesting dark shadows here which I'm hoping I just seam sealer breakage and are not anything more substantial when it approaches the jacking point area. Um, so what I should say is that this is quite common on Z3s. We see this quite a lot. Um, I'm not trying to suggest that every car has got it. I'm not trying to suggest that every car needs this work. But this car has got only 30, I think it's 37,000 miles. So extremely low. We don't know what the previous um, sort of uh, keepers um, regiment was, whether it went out in the rain through the winter, whether it was stored outside or in Scottish areas or near the coast, we don't know this, but it's got a decent amount of surface corrosion for 37, so the customer quite rightly wants us to assess this, tackle it, treat it, neutralise it and protect it for the future. So that's what we're going to be doing, um, checking out these front corners, same with the left hand side front. Doesn't seem to be as bad this one, but still a decent amount setting in underneath this seam sealer and probably also onto this ledge up here as well. This structural sort of seal ledge, which we'll want to investigate and see what's going on over there as well. Now we're going to protect the car before we start making any really dirty, dusty work that's going to go up in the atmosphere. So all the windows and doors are shut, and then we're using a genuine BMW car cover quite a rare item for the Z3 Roadster and Coupe. There's the part number. And we're gonna be putting that over the car to protect it fully whilst we're carrying out this work. Here's the genuine BMW car cover now. Clearly, nicely saying the Z3 Roadster and Coupe models. So that protect the car perfectly whilst we're working on it. The atmosphere dust that we're gonna create from the corrosion removal is obviously gonna go airborne. And we wanna do what we can to make sure it stops and it doesn't land on the vehicle itself. So. That's our protection method first. We've put the Z3 on its original front wheels and then just lowered it down very gently onto some scrap wheels we've got here, which allows us to move the ramp leg out of the way at the front. So still on the lift, 
gives us plenty of room to access the front areas. I've taken out the front um, jacking pads, the rubber ones, and now we can get to the corrosion directly underneath the jacking point and get that protected um, all in one go. So most of the seal is now back to bare metal. The areas that we were working on is the front jacking point section, or the front seal, and then underneath the jacking point section. The jacking point lives up in there. And I saw a little bit of corrosion on the front floor section. There's the edge of the seal, and that's the join from the seal to then the front floor area. And there's the chassis leg and the exhaust over there. And I saw a little bit of corrosion on the front uh, floor area, so I just started to wire wheel that off and I was quite surprised how far it travelled. So I've stopped just to make a little video just to show what is effectively corrosion underneath the seam sealer. So you can see the corrosion here, not on top of the seal but between the seal and the floor in there and also in these seams there is corrosion. So there will still be corrosion in between these two bits of metal. This edge here and this one here. There's no way you can get to that. So you can't actually remove the corrosion. All you can do is uh, slow the corrosion down. But then I just used my finger just to move the seam sealer and I was amazed that there's corrosion underneath this seam sealer which doesn't even look corroded. So all this seam sealer is quite strong. It doesn't move. There's no bubbles. There's a little bit of movement there because now I've taken a section out this bit here but fairly good but there's no corrosion there whatsoever. So if I hadn't have moved that, say my fingers are there, you wouldn't see that that floor has got corrosion in it, but yet, yeah. see if we can pick a bit out. All that seam sealer is not attached to the chassis because I've just used my hands to move it, but look at all this corrosion underneath here. This is on the front floor section, and although it's gonna make a little bit of a mess, we have to go deeper to get the car better. Originally I was wanting just to stay with the front seal sections here, but we have been tasked to work on this front section around the jacking point in the seal, and I'd imagine this is coming from the corrosion trapped in this area up here. And hopefully it's nothing structural. The floor is obviously a lot thinner than the structural seal, but I'm hoping it's just water maybe that's just managed to work its way through and penetrate the seam sealer pushing the seam sealer away and also leaving a corrosion stain at the same time. It doesn't actually look pitted like some of this metal. This is really pitted where it's been corroded for years. Whereas this so far looks smooth, but clearly the seam sealer is not stuck to the chassis any longer. So there's no point it being there. And there's also no point us carrying out our corrosion treatment work um, on here going up to this ledge here and then leaving this because it's only going to then just come loose in the future and that won't be a, then a good job so although it's going to take a little bit more time longer than we estimated we estimated the work to carry out this section on the front seals and now we're moving into a new panel called the floor pan we're going to have to chase this back and see how far it goes and then update the video later now we got rid of all the corrosion, I mean removed all the looseness of it that we can get to on the outside. Obviously we can't get inside cavities or between metal panel layers but we're going to neutralise the corrosion now with Pour 15 Metal Prep. So just use that on a paintbrush and then on the chassis it just needs to be applied probably about three to four times in this summer heat in the UK we want this to be stay moist for 30 minutes. When I was just doing that last video I noticed out of the corner of my eye there was still corrosion up in the internal folded section of metal which is pressed to make a strength straight shape for the jacking pad so I've just gone into that area and cleared that out and made sure there's no corrosion in there now. So now we can then use the Pour 15 product which won't show you any amazing results on this camera right here now it takes time to work but about 30 minutes we'll keep all this topped up like i say probably three passes will be required maybe even four just to keep this product wet on the metal so now we've neutralized the corrosion with the pour 15 metal prep that's been on there for 30 minutes and uh, we've washed it off with a very um very lightly damp warm microfiber cloth 
to make sure the chemical is off and now that's bare metal but it's still a tiny bit damp so we're going to put the infrared lamps on just to make sure that's fully dried before we go through to the next stage. So this side's now dry and whilst one-handed whilst talking on the camera so I'm going to put the camera down and carry on painting. So I've waited about two and a quarter hours I think it is. Uh, it's summer at the moment here in the UK so it's dried quite quickly. The first coat we don't want to let it go completely dry using the instructions we want to let it go tacky but when you do a finger touch you don't want it to come off on your finger and that's exactly what we've got to. So I'm now just applying the second coat. I've just done it on the very outside the vertical face and now I'm going to go underneath on the inside and start doing the uh, horizontal faces. So here's the 415, now it's dried after two coats. We've left it overnight, so we're on day two now. Um, really nice, solid, durable finish. self level so it's pretty smooth, even though it goes on with a brush. And that's all the rear, uh, the front jack and point sections. Also the join lines to the front floor section. And the front seals, the underside of the seals that were pitted with corrosion in this point here and also round the back where there was corrosion traveling up this A pillar and then part of the structural seal there and also on the ledge at the back that was starting to lift the seam sealer as well. This is the left front side and we've got exactly the same on the right side so it's totally dry. This is a bit I want to always try and get across to people because lots of people have a little bit of corrosion work done now and again with things called wax oil um, or shulks, things like that which is just a spray on application and traditionally it just goes on top of rust and it's a few hours labor, but it's fairly um, an old school product now. It's not as good technology and chemical sort of um, stuff as Pour 15, much more of a modern product, which is totally dry. So you can touch that. You could probably leave it like that. I bet that would be very good. Um, but we're gonna still coat, coat this with um, high build primer next, and then also some form of sealer, possibly sprayable, maybe brushable. Um, and then possibly a top coat colouring as well and then also when all that's dried later on in the video you'll see we'll be doing cavity waxing through the various holes to make sure that the inside is all protected as well and hasn't got any corrosion but just to show how durable this is and how dry this is I mean with wax oil and shorts you just wouldn't even be able to touch it without it coming off on your hands and then being terribly messy and mucky to work with in years to come in the future but this is just perfect I mean I that's my finger and that that's my nail and I try and really dig in and scratch this and you cannot really mark it you can put like a grease mark on it Let's see if we can find a bit of a clearer shot of this but you cannot make any sort of mark in it it's amazingly resilient to um, scratches and abrasion um, even stone chips I mean I think it'd have to be fairly heavy direct impacting of stone chips um, and fairly decent sized stones as well to to actually get you know we're talking gravel to make some sort of issue on that and this will be protected you can only see that front section there anyway because the seals on most of it and we'll be putting 
um, a seam sealer on to protect it against stone chips and things like that. But this is really clever. You have to get some form of implement, like a screwdriver, to actually make a mark on this, to scratch it. It's amazing stuff. So we use that where possible. It does cost a little bit more in time, not in parts, because the parts are fairly ineffective, uh, cost effective, this Paul 15 products, but it's the time this takes on average about two to three hours to dry. You also need to do two coats. Um, and it's just a little bit time consuming to deal with, but it is probably more effective than things like etch primer, which is more of an aerosol product. So it's a great for a DIY and for a professional workshop. Um, yeah, it gets our vote definitely. We like using it. So here's the driver's side, the right hand side, and now it's all completely dried. We need to key it up to make sure that the next layer of protection adheres to it because at the moment it's quite smooth finish very smooth in fact because you can actually see a reflection you can see my gloves here and the camera torch so very good gloss finish but we need to key this so we're going to use scotch bright which seems a shame because we're now effectively scratching it but all we're doing is keying it up so we're just putting very fine lines in it and taking the shine off of it so that the next layer which is um, going to be high build primer will adhere to it correctly. Now it's been keyed with no panel wiping to so take off the dust and the degrease make sure there's nothing on there so that the next layer is going to stick so this just evaporates really quickly and any wax that's in the area like up on there we need to get rid of that so that the next layer sticks to it perfectly. So it's all now degreased with panel wipe and I've also cleaned the dirt off of the section around the painted area. So this is the front floor section, there's the chassis leg and exhaust. And then the rest of the car has just got general road grime on. It's still, every car has this, there's nothing bad about it. And I've just cleaned off a section, probably about 50, 60, 70 mil all the way around so that when we do our overlapping um, high build primer, then sprayable seam sealer and top coat color, it's not going to be suddenly going on to dirt because then if it does, the, the, when dirt moves or gets washed, uh, so would the paint. So we want to make sure it adheres to a good solid BMW seam sealer, which is up in this area here. That's why there's a clean section all the way around it. And there's up here some stubborn cavity wax that's dribbled out from factory of the various grommet holes when they've been cavity waxing. And that won't come off with panel wipes. So where, uh, where it allows, we always like to use genuine BMW products. So here we've got some BMW cavity protection wax remover. So we're going to spray that on, let it soak in and remove that stubborn wax. We've now done some extra preparation, which is um, masking the, well, protecting the wheels, first of all, with genuine BMW wheel bag covers, which protect the wheels nicely. Then we've got lots of brown paper body shop tape all the way up in the cavities, just to protect and stop airborne um, sealers and paints going anywhere near the bonnet. Also the, well the front wing's removed but the very back edge of the bonnet which is just about there where the end grill is. Then also we're not sure exactly how much is going to be used especially if we use sprayable seam sealer so we've protected the car again on top of the BMW Z3 cover with a clear body shop cover so there's definitely nothing going to get through that white BMW cover. Um, and then we've gone do a little bit more attention to detail this is a thing that not many people do is we've masked the underside of the car because it's nothing worse than getting under a car and seeing um, overspray whether it be just seam sealer or the car's color this car's silver so it wouldn't stand out too much but we see cars quite often that have got either red overspray or blue under overspray you know it's had the side of the car or side skirts painted most body shops just let the airflow go and the overspray just naturally dust the underside of the car like the exhaust, um, the seam sealer on the floors and then the under trays with the body colour. So we've made sure that's not going to happen so we've um, made a drop down sheet protection. Also show you the underside, also protected the underside of the engine trays and then also you can see a little bit of the tunnel. That's the idea of how we masked up both sides so we're not going to get any airflow or, or paints on the underside of the car. It takes a little bit longer, but it just makes a bit better of a job. And now we're gonna get ready and put the high build primer on there. Here's some of the new bits for the Z3M Coupe we're gonna be rebuilding. Now these are all the bits that we still can get available from BMW. Two jacking pads for the front, plus the little expanding plastic rivets. 
and then the screws to hold those in. Um, three different styles of speed clips, other speed clips that pop into the chassis but I don't think any of those broke so we probably won't need to use those ones. Plastic 10mm nuts, 6.3 self tapping screws with the 10mm head, 4.8 self tapping screws with the 8mm head. Um, we've also got some wider ones which are coming in which aren't in this picture. The ones with the wider washers on there but still 4.8. Um, some side or some kick trim clips for the interior kick trim and then also I had to take out the outside air temperature sensor in the right rear quarter panel and you could see the bracket was terribly corroded so it's not part of this job but if we've got time and we can separate it then we'll try and change that bracket as well. The high build primer is now dried which leaves that grey colour all the way underneath as well and then just a gentle overlap into the OEM seam sealer to make sure we've covered all of our port 15 areas that we've been working on. And I've also put some 3M soft edge tape up here, which is this spongy tape, to try and leave uh, a feathered edge or a soft edge so that we don't have such a hard line when we peel the masking tape off after we apply the seam sealer, which is coming up next. There it is directly after sprayable seam sealer and top coat colouring which we've gone for um, sort of our version of the E-coat, which is an electrophoretic colouring. When the chassis are dipped, it's like a grey, green, olive mix. It's a funny colour, but that's what they are when they're dipped. And then the cars also get, um, normally just get a bit of overspray, body colour overspray from the robots when they're painting the chassis. Uh, so this car is Titan Silver. So I've done a bit of a Titan Silver and E-coat colour mixed together. And, and that's what it is. And you can see there against the line, just in front of my finger, going through the middle of that grommet is where I've finished. That's the match against the factory colour floor underneath the dirt, and there is the dirt line there. So once the car was fully degreased, if you did all of the underside and totally got rid of it, it would be quite close match. There's factory, and there's mine. Let's go a bit closer and you might be able to see it a little bit clearer. So yeah, not too bad at all. Once that's got some dirt in general, road sort of dust on it it will probably blend in quite nicely and that's what it is we're trying to make this thin um, not gloopy we want it to be textured sort of so like the original sort of factory finishes and doing our best to make a, an OEM replication of it so we've got to let that dry now that'll be a good few hours probably at least at least three hours I suppose and then we'll come back to it and um, assess it a little bit more before doing some cavity waxing this is the rear, uh, well, this is the outdoor temperature sensor that displays on the Z3M uh, dash, uh, the analog gauge, which gives you the outside temperature reading. Lives in the right rear quarter panel sort of wheel arch area. You have to take the wheel arch liner to get to it. And we have to take that off to get the skirt off, and you can see how corroded it is. Also looking a little bit thin in this section just here. So I'll probably, I'm going to change it. I was going to say I'll probably regret changing it, but that's only because these sensors can be delicate and by taking out this nut and the force that I need to use to overcome the corrosion contact there is a risk that the temperature sensor could become damaged so we'll see if that is the case then it will also need a new temperature sensor but it'll be better to attack this now and try and change the bracket whilst it's all out here I'm waiting for paint to dry so I might as well use the time sensibly um, with cleaning up, demasking and starting to prepare for the rebuild process so this is one of the brackets that I can do especially because they're available from BMW, here's the new one. So we're going to undo that now and see if I can change it over. Well that was successful, the uh, nut came undone fine. BMW didn't have a new nut available, so we've had to use the old one, but it's gone on fine. Threads are good and there's the new bracket on the outside temperature sensor. The seam sealer is now dried and underneath the seal, looking directly up, there's the jacking point. And there's the front seal section that was suffering with that corrosion earlier on. Here's the join edges of this front lower seal to the inner A pillar and there's the join there to the factory floor. Just going to look around inside just so you can see the seamed edges that are completely covered and then you've got natural flutes which are act as drain holes which go all the way along the chassis to let out some of the uh, waters and rain that go through these sections. I've even got up into the ledge on the lower section of the, well on top of the front seal there was corrosion up there, so that's all been taken out and recoated with seam sealer. Now that's dry, we can start the cavity waxing process. That's just after the cavity wax has been applied. I've gone in through the end of the seal up here, using a half meter wand, so I've been able to reach 
quite far away down past where we've been working and now the cavity wax is just coming out of the natural openings the self-tapping screw holes the square holes for the plastic rivets and also the natural flutes which act as water drains for the rainwater to come out of so quite happy the inside of that circumference of that chassis leg is now protected with cavity wax and now we can move on to the other side right hand side now we're moving on to the right hand side. I'm starting at the end of the seal and I'm gonna work from that end all the way back up to the other side. So that's just one pass and it will start dripping out now. I'll do a second one as well. And that ensures all that section of cavity is completely protected. So I've demasked the car now and cleaned up the cavity wax that was leaking out of the seal. That's all finished and dried now. So um, now it's time to put the side skirts, or well, the uh, lower seals back on. So the seal panel's back on with all new fixings, uh, self-tapping 4.8 screws with the eight mil heads on the top and on the bottoms. Just put the front wing on, check the door gaps on the against the door and wing, the skirt, everything's good. And also just put the two plastic rivets in the seal structural seal section there which is for the jacking point so we can now put a nice fresh jacking point on with the new screws as well. Here it is from underneath the car there's the new fresh jacking point on which looks great and I'm videoing it now because I'll be putting shortly putting the lift arm back in there so you won't be able to see that so that's what it looks like with the new BMW Torx balls. Interestingly they've changed them as well they were a Phillips or a Posi head and now now coming through um, correct the part number with a Torx head on them. The repair is almost finished now, just need to put the front wheel arch liners in which go up to this point here. But we've now got the car back on the lift, so the support lifting platforms, the new ones are installed. And obviously the uh, lower skirt with all new fixings, all the way down the line. Rear wheel arch liners are in, um, both sides looking good. So it looks like we're lifting on the seal but we're not. There is, the, there is an air gap that we're lifting on the new pads. Still see some of the cavity wax which is still creeping and then good sealed lines here whether this is the area where we found that other corrosion underneath the seam sealer which was lifting and then we had loads of corrosion down this side here let's just focus the camera a bit better and up on that section up in here where the seam sealer was lifting so all that's been done as well and obviously behind the seal structure there the jacking point and then a the passenger side similar sort of thing taking care of the corrosion on the front seal and the jacking point area and on the ledge behind and behind the um, seal as you've seen in this video it's all been off now I'm just going to put the front wheel axle liners back in to complete the job so work is now finished we've got the wheel axle liners back in and the wheels on and now we can have a good look round and check out the lack of corrosion in this area so if you scan back to the start of the video you'll see what it was like mainly affected around the front jacking points, which are here, and then the front seals as well. Same on the passenger side. So it's all been taken care of, protected with Pore 15, then high build primer, then sprayable seam sealer, then top coat color, and also cavity wax inside the cavities as well. We just had to do a natural blend to the rest of the car, which we talked about earlier on in the video. Uh, once that gets some form of atmospheric dirt on it, it will blend in a little bit better, or Alternatively, the rest of the car could be cleaned underneath. You know, there's many options here. Um, I'll just put a picture up of the underside of what it did look like in this area here now on the video and you can compare the rust area around here. That's all work completed now on this Z3M Coupe. Um, in total, I've worked out, uh, taking out the drying times and things like that, I've spent 14 hours on this repair, um, plus parts. Parts aren't that much money. Luckily, it was just some paints, consumables, and the fixings from BMW, and the jacket pads as well. Um, but a lot of people ask how long these sort of repairs take, and that was 14 hours work. <laughs>